This morning, Sandra Sneed wrote a joyful status. This miss is a soon-to-be missus. Over 300 friends liked her engagement post, and it got 76 comments. Sandra, you're one popular gal. Geico also has a comment on your status. Did you know you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance in just 15 minutes by switching to Geico? Just the way we're trying to help cushion a nice little nest egg for the future missus. Hashtag getting hitched. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle, with either that you will like that one. Hey, you know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. More stories podcast. Nick DiPaolo. I have no voice for some reason. I think it's from screaming from the rooftops that Nick DiPaolo is going to be on more stories. My old buddy. What's up, man? How are you? You're, you're looking at me so strangely because of my crazy voice. This is, I know, you sent me that text and I'm like, oh, he just doesn't want to do the show and I can't blame him. No, why? Oh, I'm like, how did he lose his voice? What are you doing, opera during the day in L.A. now? I do uh, radio and stand-up and podcasting, so my only way of making... Uh, you stand-up during the day you do? I do. What do you I do, do, do Gelson's? Noon shows at Gelson's, the bakery aisle. <laughs> Take a number. And Jay Moore, what's your, what's your name? Which, where are you from? I just do impressions to the old people. I just went in there. It's quite a market. It is a nice market. I wanted to Gelson's. use the bathroom. There's somebody in there, so I was banging on the door, making them all uncomfortable, and then I ran out. By the way, Nick DiPaolo just used my bathroom uh, to pee. I said, do you have to pee? Most guests decline, and I always, I have very small bladder. I always have to pee. I have you a said, big prostate. You have big prostate? Yeah. I just saw a prostate commercial. They said normal, and they showed like a little walnut. Yeah. And then it, as you get older, and then it became a lemon. Yeah, well, mine's like a white basketball. If, uh, Pushing against my kidneys and my throat, it's open. <laughs> so I could, <laughs> in theory, stick my fingers down your throat. And give you a prostate you massage. Could. You could. And tell make me. you ejaculate. <laughs> I know my doctor does that. And I go, well, how do you tell if it's, what are you looking for? And he goes, well, it's should you feel, you know, it's like pushing on a steak to see if it's done. So, oh, no, he didn't. Yeah, that's Dr. Disgusting. Mario Batali. Uh, <laughs> I know that's I like, what he said. Uh, I like Mario Batali because he's committed to the Crocs. He Why, are you a Crocs. Crocs fan? No, it's just, I mean, he doesn't really, truly doesn't give a shit. Like, he's wearing Crocs in the kitchen. He's comfortable. He's a billionaire. Yeah. Millionaire. Um, Jada De Laurentiis lives in the neighborhood. She lives goes, in a neighborhood? Yeah, I'll take you to her house afterwards. Can we go break in? Yeah. She just got divorced. That means she's horny right now. Uh, I'll set Nick to follow up with Jada. And here's the thing with her and her Italian. She's she fed. over, like, next we're going to make a spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> I used to, can like, I, what can are you I, doing? That's so funny you brought that up, and I'll tell spaghetti. you why. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Like, no, she spaghetti. Spaghetti, she spaghetti. says. Spaghetti, you're from, you grew up in Connecticut, stop it. That was my, I, I had a whole bit on that, okay, F- a Food Network chunk, because I like the Food Network a lot. And then I let Louie watch, especially told me to take it out, and I did. Why do you listen to Louie? What does he know? Exactly, what does he know? As he builds a moat around his house. Aside from being the greatest living comic. <laughs> my old roommate. Um... I went to Louis's apartment. Uh, let's let's talk about time. Giada some more. Giada? Do you see her pushing her a kid the, around? I saw her at the nail salon once, pre-kid. Me yeah. and my, wife's and I, my wife and I saw her at the nail salon Yeah. in the Palisades. And she uh, was just sitting there. Give her the nod. But I didn't get a nod back. She that's, seems kind of... <laughs> that's a weird show business to be in. Uh, Food Network, any like those painting guys, like a little bit of blue, because you're, <laughs> a let's, little bit of blue. Let's, yeah. <laughs> the Vietnam vet with the uh, Jufro. Yeah, with Bob uh, Ross. He's right, dead now. Right by here is a few Viet Cong, with them, uh, fighting men in pajamas, but we'll get him. It's okay. <laughs> Joey Cola, was it? He had a tremendous bit on that. I love Joey. He works at Martha Stewart now. He's like, it's uh, because it's your world. You can make this tree right here. And he goes, oh, Charlie in the bush, because he was a Vietnam vet, Bob. Oh, Ross. he really was? <laughs> yeah. I Charlie in Joey. the fucking bush. Charlie in the bush. <laughs> he, uh, he, um, the, the Food Network with uh, Jada. And, yeah. uh, my favorite is the Barefoot Contessa. 
I like her too. I had a, I had a bit on her too. I got a big bit about her. She reminds me of Kathy Bates in Misery. <laughs> She, that's very good Because she whispers And she blinks her eyes When she talks Today I'm making Jeffrey a lemon meringue pie To celebrate his book signing Meanwhile you can hear Emma Lagasse Screaming from her, her basement He's been tied up there For like six months There's more to the bit I can't remember Because Louie told me To take it out I had a whole chunk On barefoot and desert You know I think you should Have kept it in Because it's a huge Female demographic They love that stuff I know that People like I say about The barefoot and desert Yeah Out of all the people that are, have their own show on TV, nobody's more uncomfortable on camera. She's the most unlikely star of her own show. She looks like there's a dominator, like a man, like like she was a gimp. They let her out of the box, and they're like, go make Jeffrey's pear chicken, but if you fuck it up, ball gag right back in the box, because the whole time she's looking at the camera like, don't tell Jeffrey. And then she, but she gives you a look like, seriously, don't tell Jeffrey, because I'm going to be in big trouble. How bad, she has three, how bad could that be? And all her uh, friends are gay. I was going to say, what she's, four gay she's guys definitely figure pop by her uncle in high school or something. You think so? Absolutely. She doesn't have a heterosexual com- male friend. TR's coming over with the How flowers look is later. that guy? Don't have too much fun without me. Yo, TR's the hottest guy in Long Island. Unbelievable. He's in a lot of commercials now. <laughs> I can't believe Nick DiPaolo and I are just talking about the Food Network. I love time. the Food Network. I got to go back to your pee that you just took in my house. But how about Giada? Powerful pee. I could hear it through the door. No, my prostate is like Hyman no. Roth's. <laughs> I'd give six men to take a piss without it hurting. <laughs> Business, Michael. Here's the thing about your piss. I heard you piss through the door. I'm not joking. Powerful. I have a it's very not, weak. It's I terrible. heard it. What were you, you know, emptying a bag? I, was, I was. I was faking it. I, I was. So talking. here's what happened though. I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a leak because I got this thing in my throat. I've been drinking tea all day. Your piss smells exactly like chicken soup. My entire bathroom smells like chicken soup. Well, it should. No, that's weird. I, uh, you should say to your, your doctor next time he's fingering your ass and touching the steak to see if it's done properly. Say, you know, my friend Jay Moore told me my pee smells like chicken soup. He goes, you know, you have a dumpling in your ass. <laughs> Remember Patrice? Chicken's, I'm dehydrated. When, when that's Pat- what you're smelling. I haven't Patrice, had anything to eat all day. I drank. No, nothing? No. Uh, Patrice's bit when he found out he was diabetic. Remember that? What did he say? Him and his girlfriend were taking turns peeing on each other. And his girlfriend goes, baby, your pee tastes like birthday cake. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's how he fucking found out. He had diabetes. Your pee tastes like birthday cake. I I taught, I was doing a thing. I had a little show of myself on VH1 that that never saw the light of day, but I had Patrice on. He had just come from the doctor. He was late, of course, to to, to the VH1 (laughs) show. And I go, I go, how'd it go? He had a physical. I go, how'd it go? The doc. He goes, man, I, I get, uh, I get eight of the ten things that kill niggas. <laughs> I go, I, I go yeah. is one of them a handgun? <laughs> <laughs> and then he started. He was laughing. And then I said, I go, Patrice, how do you know? I go, how does the black people know when they have diabetes? How do you know when your feet start rotting? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> He thought that was the funniest thing you'd ever heard. Well, because it is funny, and that's what I like about the guys. Like, you and I came up essentially at the same time, at the same place, Boston Comedy Club, Comedy Cellar, and it was me, you, Patrice, it was Jimmy, and, you know, like, Louie was always there, and all, Colin, and all we did, Keith Robinson is, he's the only one that didn't make it, Keith Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in, he's in uh, you know who's movie, Andy Schumer's, doing better than I am. I thought that, I don't she's, she's got to hold that whole, she's no, got to hold the phone up. We put it up on the YouTube channel, that More is, Stories 37. It's hilarious. You can see Nick DiPaolo, uh, Drop Truth, new album, Another Senseless Killing. Go to uh, nickdip.com. Right, it's on sale right now. Nickdip.com. I, I shot it at Acme Comedy Club, real intimate setting. A lot of people do their albums there. It's uh, it rocks. It's it's dirtier than I like to work. I got to be honest with you. I got caught up in the moment, but uh, yeah, Nickdip.com. It's eight bucks, and then it'll be available eight everywhere. Eight bucks. Louis C.K. established minimum this. eight bucks. It's five dollars. Louis C.K. made the price. Well, it was pre-order five dollars. Mine was pre-order five dollars till January second. It's eight bucks. But here's the thing: some guy paid one hundred and one bucks for it. The other day, and that man's name, uh, Mr. DePaul, Nicholas Senior. No, it was some, somebody uh, too easy. No, I don't know who it was. Um, I know I went with it. Anyways. Another senseless killing, and this is what I like about guys like you. And it, I feel like anytime there's like racial tension in the country, which is always, and it's on CNN. Oh yeah, they I wish Patrice was alive, 
and you and Patrice could sit on either side yes. of the race baiters, w- white and black. Would be better off as a country. Because That's the way to solve it, through through humor. Remember Patrice was on, and he said to the lady, like, well, why is it what I said offensive? Like, you're not a comedy expert. Like, you're just a lady that writes. Like who I do you, who did he say that to? He was on a show. You can look it up. Look up anything, Patrice O'Neill, because it's always it was a great. lady. Phil Donahue. <laughs> it was Phil Donahue, <laughs> and uh, it was his joke. She she was uh, she was offended by Patrice's joke about uh, do it pirate style. It's where you kick your girlfriend <laughs> in the leg, and she picks her leg up, and then you come in her eye. Oh Jesus! I'm so offended she, by that. So she needs an eye patch, and she looks like she's standing <laughs> on one leg. <laughs> And the lady, like, tried to say it clean on TV, and he goes, yeah, but that's funny. And she goes, it's not funny. He goes, well, why would you know? You're just some lady. Well, who do you say this to? The lady that I don't know her name. Hillary Clinton? It was Hillary Clinton. It was, it was Giada De Laurentiis. That's, but there's the thing. See, Patrice can get away with it easier than you and I can as white guys. But you get away with it a lot more than any kind. Con- Louis gets away with anything. Well, you get to a certain level of fame, and um, Louis writes... People know how he, I mean, you know that episode he won an Emmy for? It was about the fat girl, which was unbelievably well written. But if you're a guy and you can write a fat chick and get an Emmy for it, then then you can get away with anything. And your stand-up, like, I just think you're truthful. I'm very truthful, and, and, and unfortunately people that run this business don't always like that. They they think you're a racist. Uh, some of them might. But right. I don't. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired. Like I'm, I'm selling CDs on my website for eight bucks. I don't. Need I show don't business. give a fuck. Well, that's true. Because you you were selling shows with Dennis Leary, you Leary and his partner, uh, not partner, his guy that he works with, Jim Serpico. Serpico. You guys were out there pitching a show. Yes. How did that go? Every meeting I took, every meeting we took with all the four networks. The first question, and most of the people in the meetings, there's always like six or seven people in a meeting. For a sitcom? Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, uh, six or seven people in a meeting, always at least five of them are a woman. And the other guys were usually gay. But every meeting, the first question was, so what is the wife's role in the show? I got so tired of it at the last meeting, which was with NBC. They go, so what's your wife's role in the show? I go, well, well in the pilot, I see her as pregnant, and I push her down the cellar stairs. You know, obviously joking. And, and like even Dennis and Jim just looked at me <laughs> wide-eyed. They didn't even laugh. I was hoping they'd jump in. You would think Dennis would laugh to like save it like, yeah, oh, is it Nick a card? Yes. Nick's a card. Uh, yeah. Nick, you're a ham. So everybody just sat there in silence. And I go, you know, I'm kidding. Then everybody nervously chuckled. And uh-huh. then the next day, <laughs> next day Serpico you. told me he sent a dozen roses to the lady at oh, NBC. No. The NBC lady had to get roses because yeah, you offended I, her by pushing it, your it, make-believe. We haven't made. We haven't Thank even written you. this human being. Thank you. Somebody I have not typed yet. Thank you. Out of the ether, I pushed down a flight of stairs that doesn't exist with a baby that I did not impregnate this woman with because she's a make-believe person. You could have said, then I stabbed Santa Claus 15 times, but Santa Claus would be more real because at least there's photos of him that we know we can go from. This is all true. Right. Don't you feel that though? The, in, in the last since the eighties, mid eighties, it's it's a woman worship syndrome coming out of Hollywood. Wh- wh- whether she's the hot one in the sitcom, the, the husband's always a fat dumb fuck, or whether it's movies. I can't watch another movie with, with Angelina Jolie kicks the shit out of three guys with karate move. I can't. I, I can't suspend my disbelief. I can't get to that point. I can't watch movies anymore. Even that Gone Girl, that new movie. It's a good movie. It is, but 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 it, but but it was such the book it was, was such better. there was Shut such up. hatred towards men and and, and all the writing, whoever how? this chick was, I, how I, I Jillian guess, Flynn was the writer. Yeah, and she's great. Right? I mean, it was hatred towards men. You didn't was, really when she's whenever, going when she's going. You didn't read the book. I don't have to fucking read the book. No, I'm talking I'm about the movie. Fincher directed it. He may have tilted it that way. In the book, you were continually going back and forth of whose side you were on. Okay, there was times you were like, "Wow, this poor guy." But 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 lines like well my my she goes my last boyfriend his idea of a fantasy was to to watch a, a reality TV marathon with his hands down his pants she, if you ever said that about a woman painted women with a broad brush like that I mean seriously if we're gonna get to equality okay. I want some fucking equality I want to be able to say that shit without getting in trouble well I, it, I she was great she's a great writer I love I the agree angry, with what you're saying but yeah. my argument to agree with you yeah. I'm going to go a different route. It, it's a terrible line. 
it's not like if you said that about a woman, you'd be in trouble. Like, no, you couldn't even I, say it. Wouldn't his get green lit. A fantasy is watching a reality TV. Ma- like, no guys. Like, you know what I'm doing tonight? I took a Viagra in the car on the way home. I get the house to myself. I'm gonna fucking jerk off all over myself by watching 16 hours of The Bachelor with my hand down my sweatpants. Like, that's just... It's like a, no, that's no man's idea of a fantasy. Even though you're even joking, I think it's a lazy line, which is more towards what you're saying about the female worship. I, every sitcom, the husband is like, it's Jackie Gleason, like he's an idiot. Or and commercial. End of, the, end of the show, he's got to apologize. It, my, my wife pointed out... It's mean-spirited at this point. As my uh, cat food commercials? Oh, it's yeah. always like real sensual. Yeah. Like the ladies on the couch with the cat. Yeah. And they show them bringing like fresh salmon. Like they make you hungry. Yeah. Like steak and like wheat. Yeah. Or as Norm would say, hey, bring in a wheat <laughs> for the cat, you know? <laughs> and then a dog food commercial, <laughs> you're supposed to think like the guy and his dog like actually drink beers together at the pub. Well, yeah. Like they're on the ground hanging out. It's like, hey, right, buddy? I'll give you a million. There's a million. I really should do a documentary. I could really. You get and, rich and, and famous like Boston. They won't, but who's going to do it? No, nobody. Well, it'd be an independent film, and and but I, but in order to do it, I'd have to use clips from commercials and sitcoms, which I don't I don't own, so they'd never let me have them well, to shit just, on what they do for a you living. You could just write it. I, I might you just sit down and that's write a good it point. as a series of essays and just write a little bit each day. But you're the guy that turned me on to, I heard you on Opie and Anthony talking about this like f- six years ago and you brought up the book Slouching Towards Gomorrah. Yeah. And I went out and bought that book because you were like, it's going, what flipped me. You were going crazy. It, it's about what, how it, guys like every commercial, every TV show, guys are fucking idiots. And I was saying it way before that. My, my first CD, you born let's this. You, well, you do. Let's get it out in the open. Nick DiPaolo hates women. I don't hate women. Get the fuck. That's just the point. See, that's just the point. That's the joke. And if you did, it, <laughs> okay, you're Jesus joking. Jesus Christ, I'm not that good of an actor. Um, yeah, throat. you are. You're very good. Really? I saw you in Burt Wonderstone or whatever the fuck. Oh um, my God, Eric Griffin was here last week, and he goes, "You know, it's a good movie. Did you see the movie Burt Wonderstone?" I go, "Yeah, I was in it." <laughs> and he goes, "No, seriously." I go, "Yeah." But you can't say that. Somebody, some left wing douche on a, on some blow will take that out of context. And I don't. I love women. I wouldn't. It's just why, it's infuriating to me. It, why does either side get listened to? Because why? When you what, say either side, you, you you're saying no, no, it's no. like a balanced argument. And it's no, not. No, it's not a balanced argument. It's extreme right. It's extreme left. No, it's They're, extreme left. We're talking about Hollywood, okay. and movies and commercials. It's extreme left. Okay, Political but correctness, but, but, Jay, no, no, comes I, from the left. I understand that, but the and other, that's with censorship and. But the other side of the coin, the other argument is extreme right. There, there what, seems to be... What is extreme right? The Tea Party? Six-year-old white people who pick up after themselves after they have a protest? That's extreme right. As opposed to the fucking jerk-offs trying to beat up cops on the Brooklyn Bridge? That's extreme left. See the difference? <laughs> Nick DiPaolo's new album is called uh, Brooklyn Bridge. It, no, it's called uh, Another Senseless... By the way, great title. And uh, it had nothing to do with it, with, with all the stuff that's going on in New York. Another Senseless Killing. Uh, you yeah. kill every time you're on stage. I put my name on that. Uh, Nick DiPaolo. You're one of my favorite comedians of all time. And we're going to play a clip of Nick's uh, album in a little bit later. Which clip are we Where playing? Where's she going? The producer. Probably to close the gate, maybe. <laughs> so dogs don't get out. It's a tough neighborhood around here. <laughs> yes, real hard scrape. You actually have a picket, white picket fence in front of your house. Yeah, you can hear the ocean. You go, what? If you hold the fence up to your ear, you can hear the ocean. You know why? Because it's fucking down the street. <laughs> I know. I look at people go like, yeah, I got a shelter in my ear. I can hear the ocean. I'm like, you're on the <laughs> fucking beach, dummy. It's right next to you. Oh, yeah. uh, I have one of my favorite Nick DiPaolo stories ever that I've never said on the podcast. I don't think I've ever told it on the podcast. People don't realize, like, every time, back in the day, there used to be, like, these auditions, cattle call. There'd be 10 comics a night for three separate nights. Mm-hmm. And it was either, like, NBC's looking at guys. That's right. They're going to launch you. Yeah. HBO. This particular night, it was HBO, and you had a spot. And I was at the Laugh Factory, and then I drove down to Melrose because you were there, and a couple other guys I like were there, and I was with a buddy of mine. And it's HBO, and it was like Chris, fuck, what's the guy from HBO's name? We both forget. Chris, uh, who Rock. Runs HBO? Uh, Albrecht? Chris Albrecht, yeah. It was him. It was like the new regime was in. We're looking for comics. We're going to launch guys. So. You were scheduled to go on like fifth. I don't like, even remember this, but I'm glad. Oh, you're, you're about to. Okay. Okay. 
I'm getting, no, ner- you have I'm nothing getting to, nervous. No, no, no. You have nothing to be nervous about because right. it's one of the funniest nights, the funniest <laughs> things that <laughs> really? ever happened. Yeah. Um, you were supposed to go on fifth. Great lineup of comics. Fourth guy, I never really heard of. I'm looking at the lineup. I go, I don't know who this guy is. I go, ladies and gentlemen, please. And this is for your shot. This is HBO. This is you. And you, Nick DiPaolo at the time, and still, you kill as hard as anybody kills. Period. Point blank. The end. And a discussion. And I'm not saying that because you're here. You and I talked a couple weeks ago during the vacation, right? You know I, yes. you know I love you as a comic. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm like, I don't even know who Chris Fonseca is. They go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your next comedian, uh, Chris Fonseca. And about eight minutes later, they finished carrying this man who had like horrible MS. MS, yeah. To the stage. They carried me to the stage. They, they prop him up on the stool and his opening, the crowd starts giving him a huge applause break. What's happening here? The crowd starts giving him a, a huge applause break because he's upright. Like they carry him on stage. And I immediately start losing my shit laughing because I know you're next. This guy's getting a standing ovation because he's on a stool and not falling. And his first joke, literally, I'll never forget this, Nicholas. My first joke? No, Chris Fonseca, the guy that went on right before you, the guy that dashed your hopes and dreams like a skull on a rock. (laughs) He said, people, I'm going to do an impression of the guy because it's important. I'm not mocking anybody. I have a special I remember the kid being funny. People always ask me, how long have you been handicapped? I always say, I don't know. How long have you been an asshole? (laughs) And the fucking crowd. You would have thought George Carlin, Richard Pryor, wrapped themselves around Russell Brand's dick and exploded. Exactly. They went fucking... And that shit went on for 35 minutes. Yes. Supposed to 20. And you think it's an accident they put me after this kid? So Nick goes up next. They go, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Fonseca. Uh, again, they have I'm, to. They have I'm to, going up to his applause. They got to do. Yes. They carry him out. Like, yes. They have to do underhooks. Like if you're a wrestling film wrestler. Like he was wounded on MASH and they're bringing him to triage. <laughs> yeah, they have to carry him. No fault of his, obviously. And he, he, was, he had jokes. No, he's good material. He didn't go up there and go, hey, look at me. I'm handicapped. Give me a deal. Right. He worked just as hard as anybody else. But the crowd was so. Over the top. Yes. It was completely. Unwarranted. Like he had two good legs. Like, oh my God, God bless him. Just got back from Iraq, stepped on a <laughs> landmine, look at him telling jokes. He, um, so they underhooked this guy. They carry him off the stage, and I'll never forget, his feet are dragging because he can't use his feet because he's got like a walker. I think he had a walker, not a chair. So they're dragging him backwards off the stage. And I, and I'm, I think he's milking it. No. <laughs> What if he gets like to the bar and he goes, I think that went pretty good. He runs out perfectly fine. <laughs> He's jumping rope like fucking Floyd Mayweather in the parking lot to get ready. <clears throat> He's break dancing on the, on the sidewalk in front of the club. <clears throat> People are well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nick DiPaolo. You are going on stage. He's still not all the way off the stage. Your career is over. There's nothing. HBO doesn't know who you are immediately. Yeah. They want to know who this guy is. I'll fucking find out. You open your mouth. And you say, what's with McDonald's hiring the handicap? Is that bothering anybody else? <laughs> that was the first sentence. Not one of my best bits. Out of your, well, that night, and it wasn't, you weren't mocking him. You yep. knew that your night and your HBO tenure was completely over. Yeah. So, like a good samurai, you took out your sword and you cut yourself in half. I didn't look at it that way. <laughs> you said, uh, what's with, how'd you look at it? Because I remember the whole, you want me to tell you the whole bit? I'll tell you how, how I look at it. How am I not going to go up there and, and not address that, what people just saw? What am I going to go and go, hey, boy, relationships are tough, huh? Yeah, but he doesn't work at McDonald's. Huh? He didn't work at McDonald's. It's not about McDonald's. You should have went like, hey, what's with comedy clubs hiring the handicapped? No. Like, that would have been tying in. 
You said, what's with McDonald's hiring the handicapped? Oh, the guy I, working the deep fryer is wearing a hockey helmet. You're hey, like, hey, hey Kretzky, Kretzky, can I get an what, apple pie? Where's get a my cheese? apple pie? Hey, that was kind of me, now that you look back on the it. The manager comes but, over. Hold on. I'm not done. I just, this is ingrained. This is 15 oh, years God. ago, 18 years ago. But I'd do it tonight, you know. Yes. I'm not going to change. You go, and the manager comes over, and you do an exact impression of the way Chris Van Zegel walked. And you go... Is there a problem? And you go, yeah, it's regarding Henry <laughs> back there. Holy shit, how do you remember that? Because it was too brilliant for words. And I'll tell you how I remember it's it. Regarding Henry. It gets, <laughs> that, you got to explain to people, that's an old it's reference. It's a movie with Harrison Ford where he has brain damage. <laughs> He's playing, he has brain damage, yes. That's what I said, yeah. But here's why it's in my brain forever. I love this dog. The crowd is staring at you. Like you went up wearing like a swastika armband or like, like you were Pol Pot. Like they, they were, it was icy. It was cold. They, they, See, I don't even remember that. I must block it out like a childhood rape or something. It was, I was watching a childhood rape. I don't even remember like getting a cold. However. I got the Young Comedian special. There's th from that night? Must have. I've only auditioned for HBO like three times in my life. Three people in that room that night. Yeah. are laughing so hard that the rest of the Melrose Improv are looking back. Who is fucking laughing at this? Yeah, who was it? it was me, the friend I was with, and for some reason at my table was Elvis Costello alone. And we were fucking hitting each You're other. You're kidding me. Swear, hand to Christ. You, Elvis are, Costello? Was sitting at my table and alone. You didn't introduce me? Bro, I couldn't... I play bass, you know, motherfucker. You play bass? No, I'm kidding. I... I <laughs> But that's how weird a night that was. Elvis Costello? We were... You were we, sitting at the table with Elvis? Already you were so famous, huh? I, no, no, no. I didn't know he was at the table until we were shoving each other like black people at the Apollo when they like something. So, like, we were grabbing each other's clothing. I'm not joking. We were laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's regarding Henry. You know what that is, OJ? That's not me being trying to be mean or anything. That's me. I had a plan set up, and that was going to be the opening joke, and I didn't veer from it. I had no, like, plan B. So when Chris Von Seca went up, and it took him six minutes to get to the stool, you were like, did you think, like, oh, fuck, or did you go like, well, whatever. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not budging. You know, maybe I could have made the adjustment. You're like La Mata. I don't get on for nobody. Hey, Ray. No matter what I do, no matter who I fight, I'm following a cripple. No matter what I, look at my I hands. Look at my hands. I had to follow another guy on you in Baltimore at the uh, New Year's Eve at the Improv in Baltimore. Another, I hope it wasn't Chris, it was another guy like that. <laughs> With MS or whatever. And it was really funny. I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't think it was Chris. It was another guy. But same thing. Took him six minutes to get to the stage. You'd think maybe my agent or manager would clear who's opening for me. And, but, or but maybe it, that comic would say, you know, during the show when the MC's on, maybe you could sit me next to the stage because it takes me about six minutes to right. get to the mic. And it, and it took him six minutes to get off. And but he's maybe like, do you think that's a plan because they don't have an hour or they don't have 30 minutes? So they can eat 12 minutes getting on and off the stage. I, I, I don't know. But when he got done and he kind of limped and dragged himself off, I go, I, I, then I go up and go, I go, somebody's been hitting the champagne before midnight, huh? And I bet they all went, eh. No, they, they, he laughed because he was like, stand, you know, I shouldn't say standing. He was kneeling by the stage. And the crowd was going fucking shithouse. They love you. I just, uh, I look at comedy like this. I'm going to say just what I'd say if you and I and other comics are sitting around at the table and I'm not, and that's it. Yeah, and that's Because that's how I got into it. That's where, that's how we came up. Right. Any deficiency, and if you had a weird fucking sweater, if you had an eye patch. <laughs> or if, MS. If you, if you had MS. We would, <laughs> a weird sweater with MS? You're like, oh my God, but fucking destroy it. God is my witness. If we were sitting at the comedy cellar at the Boston Comedy Club in that back room, or that back uh, row, and we had a friend that had MS, we would destroy him. I mean, that's, and that's why I don't understand, like, comics now, you walk into a room, you go, hey, look at these fucking, and they're like, they, then you're on their shit list forever. Yeah, that's because they were raised, uh, well, this new age psychology that took root out here in the 60s, by the way, on the West Coast. Go on. Where you fucking, you know, you just, it's all about self-esteem and stroking the kids, you know, fucking ego and telling them he's great no matter what he does and the whole get a trophy shit. And now they're comics and, and, and they're people who run Hollywood. That's what it is. The people who used to get beat up and they don't let that shit go, do they? 
They so the people every, that got beat up, they're running Hollywood. They run Hollywood. Every movie. And they sniff a bully when they come in the room. They know oh. They know you probably kidney punched him in the hallway well, in Boston. Which I didn't really. I, I, I was a bully to a couple kids, but I got bullied. Everybody's bullied somebody, and, and, and everybody's been bullied, in my opinion. I was, and I... Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm, right? So that's how I look at it. But yeah, they, they run the fucking... Yeah. I, I want to see another movie where, where the asshole is the jock and the letter jacket... Okay, that's been going on since 1978. Every movie, the asshole is the usually the white kid in the leather jacket, the jock, right? He's bullying the fucking. I right? like. I, see, Nick's bits are truthful. Let me tell you this. First of all, uh, listen to these commercials real quick. To the runners and the lifters, the weekend warriors, the triathletes, injuries are a fact of life. And if you don't want to slow down for ice therapy, check this out. Arctic Ease Instant Cold Wraps. You've never experienced anything like Arctic Ease before. It's cold therapy that you use while you're still active. You can run, bike, and lift while wearing Arctic Ease. Keep your joints or your muscles wrapped and cool, real cool. Arctic Ease Wraps. Well, they stay in place. They don't move around. They don't flop around or fall off. And they give you uh, similar recovery benefits to ice therapy. Here's the coolest thing. No freezer needed. The sleek design fits comfortably with no bulky ice. They're reusable. Did you hear that? You can't reuse ice. It melts. These are reusable. Arctic Ease Instant Cold Wraps. Reusable. They're clinically tested, proven, effective. Don't put your training on ice. Get reusable. Arctic Ease cold wraps at CBS Pharmacy. Get instant cooling relief when and where you need it. Or visit arcticease.com. The shaving irritate your skin? It used to always give me nicks, bumps, and razor burns, and I kept upgrading my razor. Kept doing it. Latest gimmick? I was in. Three blades, five blades, 22 blades. All right. I never found a razor with 22 blades, but the bottom line is it didn't make my nicks and bumps go away. You know why? It wasn't the razor. It was the gel and the foam, the shaving cream. You got to upgrade your shaving cream. Come on, man. Shaving gels and foams are mostly air. Air is not a lubricant. Cremo, C-R-E-M-O, is what I use now. And my skin is smooth as a baby's bottom. Cremo, people. Cremo. Cremo. Impossibly slick, foam-free shave cream. Comes in a tube, not a can. Almost any razor will glide effortlessly and comfortably over your sensitive skin. No bumps, burn, or irritation. I switch to Cremo. C-R-E-M-O. Cremo. You want a better shave? Try upgrading your shave cream. Get Cremo at Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CVS Pharmacy, Red Cap, White Tube, Cremo. In the past year, over $300 million were won playing fantasy sports at DraftKings.com. You, you, you could be the next to win big. DraftKings.com is America's favorite daily fantasy sports website created by American sports fans for American sports fans. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. You can play whenever you want. You can switch out your rosters if you feel like. That's what I do. And you know what? It's not just football. It's baseball. College, pro basketball, hockey, heck, you can even do fantasy golf if that's what floats your boat. How about this? Fantasy MMA. That's right. Draft your team in minutes. New contests every day. Look, we're all playing fantasy sports. You might as well win money. Don't wait. Join in on what hundreds of thousands of fantasy sports fans just like you have already discovered at DraftKings.com. I want you to go to DraftKings.com right now. Enter the promo code MORE, M-O-H-R, to play for free. DraftKings.com. Bigger events, bigger winners, bigger millionaires. Enter MORE, M-O-H-R, for a free entry now. DraftKings.com, DraftKings.com, DraftKings.com. Put in my last name, M-O-H-R. You're doing fantasy sports anyway. You might as well win a lot of money. DraftKings.com. You've always really taken Hollywood. We're back, folks. I wish I had commercials in my podcast. We're back. The Nick DiPaolo podcast. I wear a t-shirt and hope somebody looks in the window of my basement. <laughs> it says Budweiser on we'll get Everybody should tweet <laughs> at Nick DiPaolo uh, and <laughs> at Giada De Laurentiis at the same time that's listening to this. I love Giada. Just so like she looks on Twitter like, who is this guy? Because you're I, handsome. 
I had a whole chunk on her. Like if there was I a know. picture of Jada and you in like Us Weekly, people wouldn't go like, "Who's this fucking mook?" Like you're a, you're like a handsome guy. There's no like. I have drop my day. Off. I mean, I, I look like Steve Mariucci now, but uh, you don't look like. I, Mooch. I have my day. You know why? Because Mooch sometimes he looks a little afraid sometimes. Not Nick DiPaolo. Giada, I, I used to do the bit about how every uh, the whole show you don't see her face. They, they, there's a knife chopping two inches from her tits. She's always I'm like, why is she chopping ice cream? And ice cream in a bikini top. <laughs> you you've never saw her been, face. You've always taken Hollywood, except for when she says Milanese. Uh, that's so funny. I picked them up. spaghetti. I don't do a bit about that, making, but I just noticed it, and it I makes said, us you nuts. You grew up in Malibu. You, you, you're trying to think, well, oh, she must be from fucking Naples, huh? I like when her aunt from uh, Italy comes over. Oh, there's some tension they, there, they isn't there? fucking it? argue the whole time. <laughs> it's the, the aunt's like, no, you don't do it right. I told Louie, yeah, so Louie goes to me, uh, he goes, yeah, I watched the Food Network. He goes, and that, that this didn't do it. And it's funny, because I didn't know whether to put it in or not, that material either. I was like, I don't know if this is... Maybe it's just, just, I'm a real, like, Food Network uh, hound, and maybe, uh, and, and my wife was all for it, like you said. She goes, people, and it's true, the Food Network is like ESPN now. Yeah. I mean, so, but look, Louie goes, it did nothing for me. And, uh, and, and because I was having doubts about it originally, yeah. all I needed was to hear a guy who I respect that much, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to put it in. And he is, like, he is, like, the best. I'll throw it in the next one. There you go, buddy. I get shit about Robert Irvine, Restaurant Impossible. I got a whole chunk there. I'm Robert Irvine. He's got some big fucking arms, that what? guy. You, re- you really that have to That guy be must ju- bench TJ Friday. That's what I said. You really have to be juicing to yell at a 68-year-old Mexican chef who's just trying to make a I living? I don't even know what the appetizers are in here. Where is your menu? Why is it taking so long to be seated? It's like, bro, I called you for help, not humiliation, you douche. <laughs> He's always like, yeah. Uh, we have to have this restaurant open by 5 o'clock. There's no roof on it. The chef has one arm and the pork is filled with worms. <laughs> and then they pull it off. <laughs> and they pull it off every time. Look, I love the Food Network. And let me you tell should. you, your wife is right. My wife is right. And the amount, I probably have 40 fucking minutes of new shit that my wife said, nobody's talking about Dateline. You got to hit that head on. And I go, that's like the Biggest part of my last special was all Dateline, like Food Network, like I know, like and now, like if I like people just tweet me out of nowhere. Don't tell Jeffrey, <laughs> just because they've seen me on stage a year ago and they're watching it. And they watching think about the pit, it. like so. Listen to your wife next time. Leave it or in. Or huh? marry Louis. <laughs> Louis got a type. boat. Louis got a boat. Love him. I know he came to pick me up in that boat. What? He came up the river. I live up in northern Westchester. He came up the Hudson. He, this is why I love Louis. He, the guy's got balls, what is brass he, fucking balls. Roosevelt? <laughs> <laughs> I live not far from Roosevelt. He comes up the Hudson. I'm, 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 it's like a Sunday afternoon. I'm, I'm about to cook for some people. And he goes, uh, meet me at the Austin Docks or whatever the fucking. And I go, okay. I get my car and I, I go down there. And, and this guy's got steel balls. He's up on that high, on this huge yacht. He's at the top. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> He tries to pull into a spot. The ass end misses another boat by, I swear to God, six inches. Doesn't even know what he's doing. And then we sit on it, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. Gorgeous boat. We take pictures. Anyways, about a month and a month later, we Superstorm Sandy hits or whatever the fuck. So I call Louie, and I go, what, where's your boat? He goes, uh, he goes, I called the uh, marina. They said it's in a pile with like 10 other boats. And he's laughing about it. <laughs> like shoes in a closet. Like he lost shoes in a closet. Exactly. Yeah. I go, get him later. He goes, I had it in short. And he got another one. He was on, When I was on Opie and Anthony, he was talking about his boat. And it's, uh, it, all he had was stories about not knowing how to work it. But I guess they're true because that's the story you had. Him and he took, he took Chris Rock to see the Statue of Liberty <laughs> at night. Yeah. And they saw like a fucking submarine. And it scared the shit That's out of right. Him. He was talking about that. And he had to go like, I'm going to call the Coast Guard. And he called guard. the Coast Guard. But yeah. if I call the Coast Guard, there's no unringing that bell. I'm about to call the Coast Guard in the in national interest. And he called the Coast Guard and they're like, all right, run away. And he waited. And he wait, and then he called the Coast Guard again. He's like, this is fucking crazy. And there was like a wake. You could see the tip of the right. uh, submarine. Yeah. And then the Coast Guard came and they go, are you the guy to call this in? They go, yeah. He goes, yeah. And he goes, it's a mooring ball. <laughs> it opinion. hasn't moved in an hour and a half and it won't move in a couple days it's it's a mooring ball it's anchored to I the bottom it was a real thing you know no it was a more it was a big mooring ball that you, if you, yeah, you lost, tie your, you boat, tie your to boat to it but because of the uh tide of the hudson river it looked like it had a wake 
<laughs> but like to not realize, like I've been here two hours watching a submarine do forty miles an hour and not move. <laughs> He, he got stuck in the mud. You know that whole thing, right? Up in Harlem. Up in Harlem. Oh, that's the and, best. And the tide went out, so they were stuck in the mud for like 10 hours. His kids, hey, that's my man right there. And they yell, is that they the heckling. funniest thing? That's they why heckling. I love him, though. He's got balls of... I'm too vain. I'm too vain to like try to park a boat for the first time while people are watching and shit. <laughs> I'm such a puss. Although I stole my old man's boat when I was a kid. And uh, how about this? That's a true story. Tell me. My, my Where'd pop- you live that you have boats? I lived uh, in uh, North Shore, Massachusetts. No, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, sure. And uh, my old man goes, it's a Saturday night, him and my mother going out to eat like they always do, another couple. My father goes, don't touch the boat. It was only like a 16, 17-foot fiberglass boat, but we had a 150 Black Max Mercury engine on it. thing did like 58 miles an hour. Yeah, that's a light boat. Yeah, they had to reinforce the transom on the back with steel so it wouldn't break them. (laughs) So he goes, don't touch the boat. As soon as they leave, I call my girlfriend. Hey, want to go on the boat? Beautiful night, summer night. We're going out of the Danvers River through the Beverly River. And then there's a bridge. I see this bridge open. This big, huge boat had to go through. And they have to open the bridge because the thing's too tall for the big boat to get. So they open the bridge and there's traffic on the bridge, you know. So I go through it. And we go out, me and the girlfriend have a few beers, whatever. And then the next day, Sunday morning, we're having dinner. My father goes, how'd you enjoy the boat last night? And I couldn't even keep a straight face. He said it. It scared the living shit. You know, your old man could look in the eye and just scare the shit out of you. I just started smirking. I go, I didn't touch the boat. And I started giggling. I'm like, how the fuck did he know that? My parents were on the bridge in the car while the bridge was up <laughs> and saw me going through. What are the odds of that? That's why I could never Zero. be a criminal. Jay, that's why I could never, I could steal a pack of gum and, and be an FBI guy in the store. What are the odds? Your parents were on the friggin' bridge. It looks like Nicholas. <laughs> and I'm all cocky. You know, I'm like Quentin Jaws. You're probably like sitting on a phone book so everybody can see you. Extra tall. Unbelievable. Oh. They're on the bridge in the car and I get busted. When I was a kid, in the Barnegat Bay in New Jersey, my grandfather had a boat and they take us out all the time. Like, that's all you did. You go out in the boat, you'd be there all day. Like, now you're like, uh, probably an hour because I only got number eight sunscreen. <laughs> like, back then, you'd leave like eight in the morning, you come back at dark. That's right. All fucking day. Yeah. Fishing for bluefish, crabbing. Hey, you Nothing have lunch. on, no sunscreen. You go visit somebody, there's a sandbar, let's go swim. And then you come back, but like everybody was drinking, everybody was hammered. Like now of it's course. all water safety. I remember like my uncles, one guy would have my arms, the other guy would have my feet. I'd be like seven, eight years old and they'd swing me like they were going <laughs> to throw them in the ocean. They go on three, one, yes. two, but it never dawned on me that they were not going to do it. It's scaring it's, the shit out of you. It's terrifying. Yeah. Like now you do it to your kid and your kid go, ah! and you go like, bro, I'm, you know what? That was awful. I'm sorry, buddy. Don't say that to your kid. You saw my kid. He's that a, he's bigger than me. I, that kid, let me tell you, that kid, <laughs> Little there's nothing Mac. politically correct. What's his name? <clears throat> Meredith Daniel, named after my father in law. We call him Mackie. Yeah, you should. I don't like Meredith. It's a chick's well, name. Well, why do you tell my level five CIA classified of rocket scientist father in law you don't like Like his I name. said, it's a good name. Because he's watching what you. What is this? Meet the parents? Computer. That kid, I love your fucking son. He's a good kid. He's three. Well, that's because both his parents were in show, but he's already a ham. That kid is, how old is he? He's three? He's I thought huge. he was 13. No, he's like the size of JJ. He weighs like 140. Yeah. What are you feeding him? Heavy cream Mexicans. And, and donuts? We Mexicans come over to the house and we chop them up. <laughs> he, he is, he lifts it. He's doing a Tracy Morgan impression. Yeah, I go, show him your Tracy. And, and he, the, it's like a good one. The baby lifts up his shirt and goes, yeah, I enjoy my sippy cup. You got to get him into football. I, I, Don't give him the soccer ball. Don't listen to that. No, one. football. I took him to a oh, Palisades High football team. Uh, Please game. do, Jay. Now, you're going to like this story. I never told him anything about football, ever. He's just attracted to it. And here's the thing. There's a, a kid's book called Smash Crash, where it's two tow trucks. They go and they just wreck shit for fun. And it, They allow it, that today? In the book. <laughs> and it's like Smash Crash, and then they got to clean it up with their bodies, right? I go, let's go to Pally High. You know, I think there's a football game, Mackie. And he goes, nah. I go, no, you like football. It's smash crash, but with people. And he goes, let's go. Wow, that's good fathering right there. We go to Pally High. It's a couple blocks away, right? Football game. That's Palisades for you people who aren't from the area. Palisades High School. Forrest Whitaker. Is that where he's from? Yeah. Overrated. Go ahead. You're out of your fucking mind. I'm kidding. He's a great actor. I'm kidding. (laughs) Do an impression for Forrest Whitaker. (laughs) Yeah, make believe. Well, one one of my eyes, oh, I have open. 
Uh, you know, I did a movie with Forrest Whitaker, Street Kings. It You've was done for, a listen, lot of movies. Keanu too. Reeves, me, and Forrest Whitaker. Keanu Reeves. We're standing in a line. I don't know who's better. We're standing in a line. It's Keanu, me, and Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. And on set, I thought to myself, this might be like the acting chart. <laughs> what was the order again? It was Keanu. What do you fucking think, you asshole? What? Keanu Reeves was first, right? And then it was me, right. and then it was Forrest Whitaker. He just won the Oscar for Last King of Scotland. I go, this might be like the actual <laughs> acting chart, like the evolution. <laughs> Keanu's the best. Good kid and hot. I'm staring at his lips between takes, going, "This kid's fucking beautiful." Action. Wait, what? Was it happening? He took me out of my game. And I'm not joking. So take the kid to Pali Palisades High School. Kid takes a handoff. Uh, off left tackle, 88 yards, Ooh. takes it to the house. Some kid from Palisades High School. Go, the place is going batshit. It's huge. I love like, this place. Holds like 10,000 people, this little stadium. Carl Lewis track over there, whatever. And how many did they get? 1,500 on a Friday night? No, it was packed. It's like Friday Night Lights over here because they bust everybody Is in. that right? Oh, it was Fairfax High. It was, it was, cool. It, this yeah, is... it was great. So the place is going crazy, and my son knows, yeah, like I teach him to cheer and how to boo and all that shit. And Don't go, teach him to cheer. I go, Mackie. Do you want to play football? He goes, yes. I go, do you want to run the football like that guy did for and score a touchdown? And everybody cheers. And he goes, no. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? I go, why not? He goes, I'm going to tackle that guy. And I'm going to tackle him. And then I'm going to tackle that guy. And the whole walk home, he's pointing like fucking trash cans and cars. He goes, I'm going to tackle that trash can. You know what you got on your hand, though? You got a lot. JJ Watt. He's gonna yeah. Be, yeah. A JG, I was going to say. Oh. A fucking defensive end named Meredith. You know how much fucking money that kid's going to make? He got a lot of money off a white fighter, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what his nickname's going to well, be? What was John Wayne's real name? Marion, right? Marion. Yeah. He's very he southern. Turn. You know what? I already got a nickname for the kid. Crash. Trash truck. Trash truck? Trash truck. I like that. Here he comes. TT. He's going to be the white T Warren Sapp. TT Moore. Trash truck. That's a... He looks... I'm not kidding you. That... He's on my Instagram, uh, Jay Moore Sports. He is the world's strongest toddler. He looks like a tough little... He he's going to be a bully, I can tell. No, he won't. He's kind. He won't be a bully. Oh, you got to teach him to be a bully. Well, I, uh, what were we no, talking I'm about? I'm just saying. We were talking about uh, your kid who was attracted to a male cheerleader at the high school, you <laughs> Was that? Yes. No. I took him to Disneyland, Disney World, actually, in Florida. And he wouldn't say he was afraid of Mickey Mouse. Like five times I take this kid to fucking Disneyland or Disney World, one or the other. And every time he goes, I want to say hi to Mickey. And then right when he gets up to Mickey, he starts freaking out, crying. And then he well, hugs. he should. He's like a, you know, it's a 20-foot rat to him. Yes, but then he hugs Cinderella till it got uncomfortable. I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable that he's hugging Cinderella and he's scared of a rat. You better straighten him out. Get him, what? Get him what do you to want the other way around? Let me I hug yet. rat. Huh? <clears throat> I don't want him to hug Cinderella. Oh, I see what you're saying. He doesn't want to bang her, though. He's hugging her like in a motherly way. It was, it was, no, there was nothing motherly about that. No? It was a little weird. What do he do? Bury his little face in her? He tries. Cinderella crotch? Oh, crotch, no. We got a clip. We're going to play the right <laughs> clip. Roadside <laughs> memorials. You want me to put the mic up this, against it? This is about those fake memorials. I shouldn't say fake, but people put up those memorials uh, well, when somebody gets killed. I appreciate you uh, working me in, being the eighth podcast you've done this week. Funerals on TV. I hate public grieving. Good example of that is those makeshift roadside memorials. Do you guys have those out here? Dude, that's the most tacky fucking thing to me. If I die on the highway and the best my friends can do is make a cross out of two old street hockey sticks, <laughs> tie a 12 cent balloon to it. Oh, thanks for the effort, shitheads. I mean, there's always that stuffed animal covered in bird shit. <laughs> A teddy bear in the rain. Oh, that's going to cheer up the DiPaolo family, huh? Fucking... I just don't fucking understand these. Things are getting pretty elaborate, too. I saw one near my house on the sawmill park. It was a pinata hanging out of a maple tree. Apparently a van full of illegals tipped over on that corner. <laughs> do, you, do you ever see anybody... Uh, do you ever see anybody building these memorials? I don't. Who, what, a little fucking ninjas run out at three in the morning with plywood and a nail gun and fucking weld his mask? And, and they're really creative. They can make a cross out of anything. I don't remember reading the Bible of Jesus being nailed to PVC pipe, you know? Can, do you ever see one that's like 60 yards off the road? You're like, how the fuck did he get killed over there? You chase a deer into the woods in your Cadillac, you asshole. I mean, 
my friends build me one of those memorials, it better represent the shit that I loved and that I hated. First of all, the cross should be about 15 high, made of pizza crust with a pair of fake tits on top and a picture of Oprah with a knife in her forehead. My liberal friends would be like, well, he's kind of a right winger. Should we light this on fire? <laughs> Go ahead. I like a burnt crust. Fuck it. What do you want to do, but you want to, you want to pick up your, first of all, you're not holding a microphone. Oh, you're so it's been a long day, Jay. I slept douche. two hours last night. So whose fault is that? Your prostates? Yeah, it's the couple next door. Oh, I got to ask you this. You were Mitch Hedberg's next door neighbor, right? Yeah. So do you know the story about your name on a set list? Of course I know the story. Didn't the I tell you about it? Will you tell the listeners, please? Yeah, I already told it on a few others. Yeah, um. I moved into, uh, yeah, it was in West Hollywood, Sierra Bonita, some little shitty building. The one I went to. The, what? The one I went to that night. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. I never was, I was never at your apartment? I don't think so. Okay. Were you? I was one day. At Sierra Bonita? I was at your an apartment that you lived in. Do you oh, you remember were bring, that? That's right. You were bringing me marijuana? Probably. So, uh, yeah, so the superintendent goes, you're a stand-up comedian. Well, there's a stand-up comedian living in the apartment next to you. And this is before anybody knew Mitch, I guess. So I didn't know him either. And I go, okay. And you know, a couple nights later, I hear a guitar, and I'm thinking this guy must be a real hack, you know. <laughs> and and then like a month later, I see him on Letterman, and I go, oh my god, this guy's hilarious. Did you know, you know it was your neighbor? I didn't. Yeah, at that point, oh, I didn't. Yeah. Know it was, uh, and um, but he used to have uh, people come over and they play him and his girlfriend play like folk guitar and shit and then we used to get too loud i'm trying to watch tv so i'd bang on the wall reality tv with your hand on your pants yes exactly and i'd bang on the wall and um so uh yeah i'm in new york one time and and zoe freeman comes up because mitch was going to do letterman this is a few a few years later and says she goes to me you know he's he does a bit about you she had his napkin with a set list on it and the second joke was DePaulo. it said <laughs> And what was the joke? And the, and the joke was, yeah, he used to play. He goes, I like to play my music loud. And my neighbor would bang on the door. No, on the wall. On the wall, excuse me. And he used to go. And I used to say to him, come around. <laughs> you got to go around. You got to go around. I do not have a doorknob on this side of the, whatever. It was one of those there classic. There is no door in the wall. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. If you want to come in, you must come around. You must come around. Exactly. And uh, that was the bit. Was, and but, then when he did Letterman, and it, I joke it. number two, it just said Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> on the set list on the napkin, Zoe showed me. It said, That's amazing. It said DiPaolo on it. And I loved him. And I, and I felt so bad, you know. I remember get, I bought him like a case of Heineken and put it in front of his door. <laughs> As an apology? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> or to help your career? But, you know, he's so laid back, he didn't care. And... um yeah, that's my Mitch Hedberg story. You've never, like, you've always taken TV on at first. I was going to say this earlier, but, like, I remember, like, 1991, I can remember you at the Boston Comedy Club doing jokes about how they fake integrate sitcoms. It's always, like, eight white friends, but they always have, like, the one black friend. Well, yeah, the and commercial. You're, you're always like, oh, it's totally normal, right? Sure. Yeah, the commercial. I, I go, aren't there, I, I can't even remember the bit, but aren't there four white guys watching a ball game? Drinking Budweiser. Or, or even four black guys without a dorky white friend. You know what I mean? They always got to mix one in. And I said, well, they always, you, you got to have the black guy, the white guy. You, you, I said, the Indian in a full headdress. There's an Eskimo <laughs> next to him. And there's a guy on a donkey with a sombrero. And, you know, because that's what, it, apparently that's what it, the world looks like. And then people always go, well, they're just trying to reach everybody in that. Oh, really? So that's going to, really, that's what's going to do it? You know, I wasn't going to drink Budweiser, but since that guy's wearing the same headdress as me. Exactly. Is that, is that fucking, I go, no, it's about them not wanting to kill us kill each other. That's how they keep us... Do you remember the punchline? Wait, the theory, white, but... Do you remember the punchline about the four white guys and the one black friend? I go if you see if you see a white guy hanging out <laughs> with a four black guy, I go something about him. Yeah, at the end of the night, he's unconscious in the street, missing his sneakers, <laughs> with a brick in the back of his head. <laughs> something like that. How do you remember the worst shit? What Jay, do you mean the worst? I've come just, around. This, these are things that have made me laugh. You know, if you hear a song, you love it. You and, know the words. To, if "Born to Run" comes on the radio. 
That's and you true. sing along, your wife doesn't go, how the fuck do you know the words to this? That's right. Like, I love comedy. It's music to me, man. <laughs> I'm the same way. When I listen to Raw Dog, there's certain guys that come on, and I'll turn it up like it's a Stones or Skinner. Yeah. That's exactly right. Especially if they're doing it uh, like a Skinner or Stones bit. Like Judy Tenuta, and I'll shut it right the fuck off. Yeah. Is she still doing stand-up? Only if it's under a chandelier and a gown. The fuck told her she was funny. Oh, pigs. There were a lot of people in the 80s, I think, got free passes. My husband loves pancakes. A lot of free passes got handed out in the 80s. Would you agree? Yeah, all in the name of affirmative action. Anyways. What's affirmative about a white lady with an accordion? That's a, a feminist thing. You know, there's not a guy funny than Judy Tenuta that deserve, deserve that oh, spot. Oh, I'm, I'm agreeing with that you. That dog is so cute. Because I have a Yorkshire on, Terrier, too. She's on my Instagram. That dog is... I want to put garlic and lemon on it and just <laughs> bake that motherfucker tonight. <laughs> I love that dog so much that I want to squeeze it until it fucking uh, <laughs> How shit. tired you are, you poor bastard. I want to squeeze the dog until she shits out an exact replica of herself, and then I want to fucking strangle the other one to death. That's called, you know what, cloning. Yeah. I want to, I want to squeeze her, like cuddle, until she shits out another little two and a half pound Yorkie, <laughs> and then I want to take the clone and squeeze it till I fucking kill Jay, it. Jay, that's horrible. The PETA people are going to be picketing in front of your picket fence out there. Uh, you know Look what? Look at I'll, this I'll place. This I'll is, throw I'm a steak at them. What is this? Father knows best. What? Father knows best. You know what I'm doing when Peter shows up? I'm going to put, uh, you know, like in Panama, we played uh, fucking music to get Noriega to surrender. We just bombarded him with heavy metal. I'm going to play Sarah McLaughlin songs to Peter when they come to my house. <laughs> In the end. She's another one. How about her? She wants you to adopt a dog with like one eye and mustard coming out of its ears. In the commercial, she has like a $3,000 <laughs> fucking golden retriever in her lap. Like you get the pedigree and I got to take fucking yeah, Sammy exactly. Davis Jr. over your hands. Yeah. A dog with two legs. and a Oh, isn't that the best though when you see a dog with two legs and he's got the little chair behind him? Yeah, they... they they, they, bolt, doggy. they bolt in a, uh, what do you call it, a, a dolly? Yeah, the wild, thing, the thing you stack a case of Coke on at a party to roll into the garage. They fucking weld that to his hips and they <laughs> let the dog. Ever see a dog with a flat? <laughs> well, they have the, they put tires on the dog with no legs. I saw him pulled over on the side of the road. The fucking, it was a Labrador retriever that had a flat. And that dog gets to the stage faster. <laughs> And I come on right after the dog, and I go, hey, I thought this was stand-up comedy. I actually said that, too, after somebody. <clears throat> Quit putting people on with afflictions in front of me, and I'll be nice. Another senseless killing. Nick DiPaolo, you can order it uh, on his website, Nick Dip, N-I-C-K-D-I-P, uh, nickdip.com. Yeah. Uh, Nick has always <laughs> been one of my favorite comics. Rapist slash match.com. He really is losing his voice. Super Dave Osborne. <laughs> This is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to round third with this podcast. What was the little Japanese guy you hung out with? Who, you know, Super Day? I forget. He was like, Mr. Fuji's going to let the tiger eat him. <laughs> <laughs> Nick DiPaolo, I hope you had a good time. Jay, I had a great time, and I appreciate uh, you doing this in your garage. It's worth 11 degrees in here. I can see my breath. You know what? Typical male. Complaining all the time. No, you're close to the ocean. I am close to the ocean. What a house, folks. You should see Jay's house. He must be selling coke to kids during the day. You know, it's Gary on Married Money. Never buy a house when you're on a sitcom. Gary the, I'm... the sitcom gets canceled, and the house goes into syndication. <laughs> this thing's a fucking <laughs> album. You want to buy it? <laughs> what, are you kidding me? I'm, yeah. I'm only paying 20% of it. I'm paying 80% of the bank still. Yeah. I'll take this note off your hand with my residuals from True TV, World's Dumbest Criminals residuals. <laughs> What did like you play? 11 guy, cents. Guy hiding under a baby pool. No, I, I played comic commenting on clips. People still bust my balls about it. Why? It's a fun gig. I, it's so funny. When they, often, when they ask me to do that, I go, look, I go, I don't want to be on the credits or on your website. I'll take the money. I'll do the things because I thought it was stupid. I hate shows like that. That show was the most popular thing on TV. No, I'm at the airport. People used to go, oh, I know you from comedies. I know you're from Louis C.K. Now they go, I know you're from World's uh, Dumbest Fucking Cats. <laughs> world's dumbest that's fucking... what people recognize me from I go where I really have to get back where up there where is Barry Katz on that show I can't believe I took fifth again man 
<laughs> Nick, you're going on fifth. You're following a guy named Chris Fonseca. He probably, you know what? Chris, He's special. Barry probably got me that slot. He was probably my manager Barry's at that a time. Good man, Barry works hard. Hey, you know what you should play too? The other clip. How many clips am I playing? Just of your two. Special. How many of did I We're say? We're gonna do roadside memorials. Do roadside he memorials said I play and play uh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. About him getting throat cancer. Oh Jesus! From eating box. Yeah, it's that my, guy ate so much box. Yeah, it's it's killer. It's 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 so it's. It, Why don't you it, just say it to me now, like a human being, instead of us playing fucking clips like I'm Casey Kasem? What do you mean? Dead. What are you talking about? Why don't you just tell me about Michael Douglas right now? No, I want Turn you to play off. the. I want you to play the bit. But what? Do, Drop it in a post. You, you want me to me? set it up? You mean right yeah, now? Just tell hey, me. do you ever get throat cancer from eating pussy? Jam- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> well, right at the beginning, when you said you throat hurt, I was going to work it in. Well, God forbid. Yeah, the roadside memorial thing. Can we kill this? The, the roadside memorial thing. Uh, oh, you want to throw out the mics now? Well, no, I'm just saying when you play the roadside memorial. But yeah, you should wait, I guess, till you get to the. Uh, no, we're going to set it up. You're going to work it out with Corey. You're going to time oh, Corey. Right. And now I'm going to go gargle with cum. Yeah, you should. Holy shit. I got to be honest. With you, I thought you were bullshitting. I go, Jay's trying to fucking give me the high five here with a fake voice. But you aren't kidding. No. So uh, I needed you on this I podcast apologize. because I only have people on I give a shit about. If I don't give a shit about them, I don't care. How about I, me? I'm out here fucking with my Ford Fusion rent the car, and I'm using the Waze app to find my way around L.A. Yeah, Nick DePaula pulled up and goes, can I use your phone charger? <laughs> and I go, yeah, come on in. I hand him the uh, iPhone 5 charger. He goes, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> yeah, you went to Palisade You have a hot pizza. water heater I can hook my phone up to? <laughs> That Yorkshire Terry's legs feel strong tonight. We're going to have it run on a wheel so I can get her some bars. She's got a, she's got a bad wheel. I went to... Back left one. She's got a bad hammy. Look at the face on that thing. Kirk I could Fox swallow that, that little fur ball. <laughs> I went to Palisades Pizza down the street, and I'll give them a plug. And the guy was nice enough to let me pl- uh, recharge my phone for a few minutes. How about the fact that uh, you get commercials on your podcast? Every podcast I've done, you guys are commercials. I had like well, three live how, reads about a month ago. Well, that's kind of how it works, Nick. I honestly, I didn't know you had a podcast. I have a great podcast. What's it it's called? It's in the top hundred. I'll every put it. Do you have a? Can it's I get called it? the Nick DiPaolo podcast. Okay. Yeah. Because it's I on Riotcast.com and iTunes and Stitcher. <clears throat> but yeah. right, go to Riotcast.com or go to NickDip.com while you're buying my new killer special for eight bucks. For eight I'm bucks. telling you guys, if Nick DiPaolo is playing anywhere in your town. You gotta go. Please come out. Like he's the f- hill. It's crazy making how funny. He get, is. get your girlfriend's tickets to Annie that night. The black version, of course, not the white. With Jamie Foxx. Yes. We have to overturn everything. Well, well that was another thing. My yeah. wife had a big game. The Wizification. She calls it the Wizification. The Wizific- movies. Because the Wiz was the first one. That's right. She goes, why not just real ma- remake? Oh. Uh, I said it to Brooks Whalen. Let's just do fucking black Annie Hall. Yeah. You were, you were Granny Hall would call a real black. Just to read the ordinary people, good fellas. Just remake every movie uh, with Tyler Perry and Medea. There's a, there's a pork roast behind the, uh, behind the refrigerator. What do, well, how am I going to catch it? What am I going to put a... <laughs> this, wait, the, that was the song I can't. I'm going to get in trouble for being a racist. Because now I'm on the corporate clock with the radio show. Yeah, you got to be careful. But you don't have to be. Go. That, I just did it. That's all I got. <laughs> the pork it's been roast. a long day. That was your big racist launch, a pork roast instead of a lobster? It's a, it's a pork roast behind the fridge. <laughs> how, how do you want me to get it out of there? You want... I don't mean to be, you know, gangster or, uh, <laughs> you know, have any swag effect in the evening, you know. But... This guy can do anybody. Who else? Who do you need? Who do you need me to do to make your day happy? Christopher Walken. Of course. Yeah. But with my voice, the way it is, sounds like I've been shouting. <laughs> I can't do it. No, you can't. But you had a three-year-old do Tracy Morgan to you on the sidewalk. That kid, I love that kid. I mean, he looks like a bruiser, as they say. He is a tank. Please put a helmet on it. Don't let the wife push him into soccer. No, right? no, no. She knows She huh? knows he's going to do football. I was wrestling Where's Nikki with, from? Uh, Santa Monica, down the street. Oh, she grew up here? Yeah. I thought she was like a... She's fucking so hot. Jesus Christ. She's a savant? She's so hot. I, I thought you said a savant. She's a savant as well. Here's the thing. I'm wrestling with my son on the couch. Yeah. And you know, I was a big, I wrestled. That's my passion. Yeah. And we're rest. What three-year-old says this? I'm wrestling with him. We're goofing off. I'm tickling and wrestling. And I go, hey, time out, Mackie. And he looks at me. I go, you know, when you get older, you know, daddy wrestled 
when you get older, I can make you a champion. And he stops what he's doing. He goes, teach me to wrestle. Like, he got fucking serious. Did he really? Yeah, like, I'm Only one three-year-old I know who would say that, who did say that, actually. Who? Dan Gable? Or Kale Sanderson? No, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking? Yeah. <laughs> teach me to wrestle. Did he type it in? That was a good movie. Hey, Stephen Hawking. <laughs> you know, he cheated on his wife. I know. With his nurse. I know. I like saw the movie. Anybody out there, that they, I didn't see the movie, but I know it is fact, because I'm obsessed with the fact that people are like, oh, there's no man out there for me. There's no woman out there for me. This guy is in a wheelchair, yeah. paralyzed from like his eyeballs down. Yeah. And he's not even in the chair correctly. It looks like somebody like put him away too quick. That's true. What's this? It's like, quick. What's this? Put the fucking Steven in the chair. My parents are coming home, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, he's, and he found somebody to roll him down the aisle and marry him. Yeah, and he cheats. Well, was it and cheating? one day, his nurse has given him the bath, and he's got to talk through the machine. Yeah. And he just, you just hear, suck it. <laughs> and then he, can, then he can make it go like, J LOL. <laughs> like, like if she's not into it. You'd be like, well, I, I'm a brilliant man. I have a sense of L-O-L, L-O-L. I'm the wife, though. Suck if, it. if I'm his wife and that, and that happens, I, could, you, I would just fucking open the front door or the back door, <laughs> wherever, wherever the built-in pool is, and head him right towards it. Roll Steve Hawking towards yeah. the pool? Make that fucking hole in your throat like the top of a fucking dolphin's. See how much... <laughs> what the fuck? Like... <laughs> Right now, Jim Zerbergo is sending flowers to Podcast One. <laughs> oh. so, so you make money doing this? <clears throat> no. Nick DiPaolo, another senseless killing. We'll play some tracks. And, uh, you know, usually we play uh, a song. When, when are you going to play it? When's this going to air or be posted? I'll put it on Monday. We'll put it on Monday. Could you? Lump so it in with all the 19 other podcasts you did. No, because they, like they're, not, somebody they're on not on Twitter. Monday. No, but somebody on Twitter had to go, hey, since you're doing all these other podcasts. Nobody told me. No, that was my idea to do you. Oh, really? Of course. Really? Yeah. See, I, brought, I, 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 brought, I, see, I got my voice back. I brought the bass. Yeah, thank you, Peter Brady. I went on iTunes. Uh huh. And, uh, you know, and I looked at it. I go, who are the guys that I like and that can help me out? I'm not going to do. Well, and yours, yours, yours is always in the top 30. Nick DiPaolo, another senseless killing. And again, nickdip.com. Uh, I got a podcast.